Hello, welcome back to Travel Like an Ocean. I just wanted to do this quick video on some of the mistakes I made today on my travels to my vacation destination. Some of these things I hope you guys will never make, or at least if you do, you have better options available to you. These aren't terrible things that happened. They were just things that happened, and it, it, it's part of the everyday getting from point A to point B during vacation type of scenario. I wanted to share those with you and have you um, prep for them yourselves or at least uh, share in my uh, misery on my commute. So number one, my fear of getting out of the area, you know, getting out of the Seattle area. I said that I'm going to opt to stay up the entire night so that I wouldn't miss my flight. Looking back at that, I think that was a bad decision because one should always try to get a good night's sleep uh, prior to their travel endeavors. I guess I could have set up an alarm to wake me up significantly earlier than um, I did. What ended up happening was, as I got to the airport, I was completely exhausted, and um, it was just, I was just fighting myself to try to stay awake, because the one thing you don't want to do is get there in time, and then realize that uh, you fell asleep at your gate, and you your flight's gone when you wake up. So, fortunately, that didn't happen, but I certainly felt exhausted. Mistake number two, I was trying to do the math between whether I take a Lyft or an Uber in. Turned out that it was actually more cost effective to uh, drive with the discounted parking rate for the week long time that's going to be there versus the surge pricing that the Uber and Lyft were charging um, uh, because of the weather and the, uh, the popularity of travel. So I actually made out uh, better by doing that. The other thing that um, I got lucky on, and you don't want to leave this to chance, is the lot that I chose just happened to have spaces. You definitely want to uh, make this decision early on in your travel plans if you're going to drive or be driven to the airport and set those arrangements up. Fortunately, um, the parking facility did have a few spaces open. Uh, and she did caution me that had I waited another week, uh, especially in the Christmas season and moving into New Year's, they would have not had the space for me to just come in off the street last minute. And that would have really been disastrous because then I would have driven in, found that I couldn't park, had to go all the way back home, then call an Uber. And who knows what that scenario would have looked like, especially with these tight timelines. The next thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, I, I got a little complacent because I have um, the, the TSA pre-check and, you know, I've been watching in the news and it's people have been warned that you need to get to your flights. Uh, usually domestic is an hour early and international is two hours early and they, you know, have been given advice that you should give domestic two hours and give international four hours to get to your, um, uh, get through the TSA line. I just kind of ignored that and went ahead and um, went to the airport with about an hour and a half um, uh, cushion because I figured I have TSA pre-check. I was really surprised. TSA pre-check was also jam-packed and there was a, a winding line, which I never saw before the entire time that I've had that TSA pre-check uh, service, 
never really seen it back up the way it did, that I had enough time in my schedule to be able to get back here. So I was flying from SeaTac to New York and then from New York down to Miami. Hustle and bustle of the airport. Can never get used to this. Well, the good news is I have a four hour flight. The bad news is I'm gonna take every minute of that four hours to find my flight. I enjoy these moving sidewalks. Especially with the bum knee. Helps me get around. No time for that though. It started to snow a little bit in Seattle, so I was wor worried that the flight would be canceled because prior to um, my uh, my vacation time, there have been a lot of uh, uh, changes in the weather and many flights have been canceled. Uh, fortunately, my flight wasn't canceled, but it was delayed by 45 minutes. I certainly panicked because I know I have a, I have a connecting flight, or I knew I had a connecting flight in New York, and the time it takes from getting from your terminal to the next location could be significant. Fortunately, my layover was four hours, so it allotted me plenty of time to be able to get from um, uh, my connecting flight to the final connection uh, down to Florida. Another circumstance that happened on my flight was there was a mid-air medical emergency. Never was involved in one of those before. A gentleman on my flight was having some medical challenges and the captain uh, announced over the you know, loud uh, speaker, if there's any medical, anyone with medical background or a doctor on board, please come back to the rear of the plane. Thought I'd never hear that, I did. That caused um, the second beverage service not to be served, as well as keeping people on the plane at the end so that medical personnel could take off the person who was afflicted. Had I not had a big enough cushion, that would have certainly impacted my transfer to the uh, final leg of my transfer, uh, transportation. And, and one asks themselves, well, you know, what is a reasonable amount of cushion? Well, I'll tell you, I am certainly glad that it's four hours because it really uh, took care of me in, in several of these scenarios. So I'm just glad that I had enough time my final destination. I am only halfway there. Uh, I am in New York now waiting for my flight to Miami. But from what I see on the uh, board, the flight is on time. Uh, and... I've been sitting here for at least 45 minutes without any issues, and I have at least another two hours to go before I need to start worrying about boarding. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, we're going on Virgin this time, Virgin Cruise Line, and I'll be giving you various looks and feels of the cruise. This is my second Virgin Cruise, and hopefully we'll be giving you some information you could use and please make sure you watch um, my original uh, Virgin Cruise video, which is in my playlist. And you'll be able to compare and contrast my experiences the first time versus my next cruise with them now. I was traveling on a new Virgin ship, uh, and the same is going to happen here. So last year when I was on my Virgin um, Cruise, I was, it was that ship was brand new and the same thing's happening this time around. So not only am I getting the experience of the cruise line uh, itself, I'm also uh, getting a taste of what it is for them to shake out uh, a brand new cruise ship and some of the things that they need to work on. Please remember to like and subscribe. I really want to get the word out to a lot of people who enjoy travel news and it'd be helpful if you remember to push that button it costs you nothing, it means everything to me. Please continue enjoying travel like an ocean. I just have to tell you, you're not gonna believe this. I mean, I couldn't have written a more dramatic Hollywood script on trying to get to my cruise. Well, I told you in the first half of this um, 
presentation. I had some troubles getting from Seattle to New York. I thought I was, it was going to be smooth sailing after that. Just, you know, I dealt with the issues that I had to deal with, and that was that. But of course, I get into my, I get on, I check into my flight from New York down to Miami. Uneventful, was able to uh, I get there with no problem. However, that New York airport is huge. So, word to the travel wise, it's, it, it don't book flights with less than a two hour um, uh, gap. Otherwise, you really run the risk of uh, missing your flight. I actually had to take a shuttle to get to the next leg of my flight. And it, was, it was on the same airline. It wasn't even like a different airline. The gates were just so far apart. But anyway, th that's just, that's one thing, right? I should have known that was a precursor to what happened the rest of the way. Anyway, on the flight, I actually had an outside seat this time, which I was happy for. Didn't have that coming down as I already shared with you, and that was the most uncomfortable um, activity that I had to do. Got on the flight, it was fine. Push back from the gate, the captain comes on and says, we are gonna be uh, 45 minutes early because we're getting there. Then the captain comes back on the loudspeaker and says, one of our navigation modules went out, so we can't fly the plane. So unless we try this, um, hard reboot and see if it comes back up. We may have to go back in to uh, the terminal. We, we sit there 20 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes. The captain comes back on, said the hard boot's not going to work. However, they do have an alternative part um, wherever they have their plane extra parts. And he said, he said, um, the problem is we're going to have to go back to the gate to be able to do that. It is what it is. They have the module <laughs> on the flight. I just want to get down to Miami. We pull a little closer. To, now I can't see, of course, because I have an aisle seat and I'm not going to reach over the people, you know, in the chair to say, can I look out the window? But anyway, we were waiting a while. Finally, we started moving and then we just stopped and I was like why isn't he announcing that we were at the gate well he couldn't announce we were at the gate because we technically were supposed to be gone so airplanes had already come in and filled all the berths for the planes that were there so they had to figure out a gate to put us in to be able to do the repair they found the gate they moved us over to that gate now the part that we were, they were going to uh, replace was sitting at the warehouse at the other location. So now we got to wait for that person to, you know, um, uh, shuttle the part back to the plane and for them to install it. And as we're waiting, now we're in about an hour and a half, two hours, just kind of sitting and waiting. Oh, and I, by the way, all the time, the captain's like, you have to sit down can't move. I may have to move the plane at a moment's notice. Everyone has to sit down. I know my teeth are swimming. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. You know anything about me, I always have to go to the bathroom. So I'm sitting there, I'm crossing my legs and doing the rock and doing everything I can to just keep it together. Two hours pass, two hours, 15 minutes, and finally he says, we have the part, they're going to put it on, um, but there's no guarantee it's going to work because we're just we're putting this in cold and we're trying to see if this thing works and it's part of our navigation. So if this doesn't work, we're gonna have to deplane everyone and get, get you down on a different asset, which is gonna take some time to um, get there. Now, mind you, my original flight, we were leaving New York at 7.30 p.m. The flight was only gonna be about two, two and a half hours. So um, we're looking at 9.30, 10 o'clock tops down to Miami. We're already on the tarmac two hours. So the time we were supposed to arrive in Miami, we're still sitting cold without the, the part being put in. Now they take the time to put the part in, telling us that and saying that we may have to, we may have to switch planes, which they'd have to fly the plane from a different location to, my, uh, to New York to get us on. Uh, needless to say that all the pilots are already at their maximum hours and that it would be e even he wouldn't be able to fly the new plane because um, his their crew is based out of uh, uh, Miami so he would have been he would have uh, overflew he would have been up too long to be able to fly basically uh, because of the rules so now they have to try to find another pilot to fly the new plane on and on and on now mind you this is a caveat for all you people who plan uh, 
who plan to go on a cruise and they fly in the same day. Don't do it. <laughs> do not do it for this very reason. I was worried about weather, being stuck in weather. It turned out to be a navigation issue, which is even worse to me. I'm glad the guy caught it, the pilot caught it, and it wasn't, it was a non-issue. Um, long story short, they uh, replaced the part, rebooted the system, and now it worked. You are off, it's the wild blue yonder. At this point, it was the wild pitch black yonder. No other incidents, we got it. Well, actually, one other incident. I got one other thing to tell you. Uh, we get down to Miami, it's now 1 a.m. Exhausted, uh, I call my hotel, uh, the Hyatt, thank you, Hyatt. Um, beautiful property and they have a shuttle service that that goes and picks people up from the airport for free so free sounds pretty good to me uh, I went the entire day without eating drinking very little uh, exhausted stressed out because everything looked like it was not going well called the hotel for a pickup and guess what folks the last pickup was at 11 p.m. so it looks like I'm Ubering or um, lifting and I ended up calling a lift and um, my driver got there right Right away, I was able to get into the hotel, checked in without an issue, and that was that. One last issue on the day of the cruise. So my uh, time to be at the port was supposed to be 2.30. Because of everything that happened, I slept late, and they gave me a late checkout at the hotel. I left the hotel at 1. It's, you know, with traffic, maybe a 30-minute ride, but normally it's a quick Chomped. Called my lift, was waiting for him, got this indication, your driver is about to leave, you're not at this at the spot, and I was like, ah, that, that's impossible, I'm standing here at the hotel waiting for my driver, and I texted him, and he said, yeah, I've been here waiting for you, where are you? And I was like, how are you waiting for me? I've been here the entire time. The app sent me to a public park. It's like a public park. And you're just hanging out in a public park looking for me? Didn't that, doesn't that seem kind of, kind of strange? They said, well, yeah, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's what the app said. So I then had to forward him the address of the hotel, which by the way, was like two minutes from where he was. He finally got to me, the nicest guy, nicest guy. We had a great conversation. We were yucking it up, you know, guy talk. It was, it was pretty cool. I, I get to the port, get settled in, was able to get on on my cruise get settled in and then i look at my bill and then on my bill was like a special charge for a special pickup now i don't know if he added that because he had to go to the second location or if that was something automatic that the app did but i got charged an extra um uh, 371 almost four bucks for uh you know special pickup <laughs> at the end of the day i'm here i made it i'm filming this portion of the uh, vlog from my room on the ship. Just wanted to uh, file this one as, you know, before the trip could start, you gotta get there. Thank you again for, for joining me on Travel Like an Ocean, and until next time. health update i have a bum knee that's been bothering me a lot so um, one of the things that is really challenging is it's taking three times as much as four times the amount of time to navigate because i have to go very slow and uh, reduce my um, uh, the amount of weight that i'm pulling in my luggage on top of that i have a bit of a cold or a flu or something where i have a nagging cough <coughs> <coughs> and it's affecting the way I speak as you probably can discern by listening to me now. Remember to like and subscribe and click that bell.